In this video, we're going to start working with text and processing. So here are a few steps for working with text. Uh, the first thing we want to do is declare an object of type pfont. So this is similar to pimage and pshape. Um, we, we have this data type, um, and technically it's an object. Uh, we want to use the create font function to load a font. Uh, and inside the parentheses, you'll put the, uh, the typeface in quotes. Um, and you can use system fonts here, uh, or if you have a, uh, a typeface, um, find that TTF works well. Uh, you just need to put that in the data folder of the sketch. Uh, also, like P image and P shape. Um, next up, you'll use text font to sort of specify which font to use. Uh, you could load multiple fonts um, in, into your document and, and be switching between them, but text font is sort of like letting the sketch know which one to, to use. Uh, if you want to change the color, you're going to use the fill function, not stroke. Uh, it will be filled for the color of the text. And then we'll use text function to display the text. And inside the parentheses, uh, you will put that the text you want to use you know, as a string or it could, I guess you could reference it with a variable um, and the X and the Y position. All right, so let's take a look at some code. First, declare an object of type pfont. So we'll call it pfont. Um, maybe we'll just call it P or uh, why don't we call it F for font. Um, inside the setup, we'll just create a, a basic sketch. And we are going to say f equals create font. So we'll use the, this create font. Um, and right now, I'm just going to use a system font. Maybe I'll just use Arial. Uh, and this is something that should be available on most computers. Um, and we could specify the size. Maybe for right now, I'll say 20. Um, I think you can also leave that out. Uh, let's go into the void draw. Uh, we'll make a background here. Maybe it's, it's a white background. And we'll use text font here. Uh, we'll say to load up text font F. Uh, so that's the font we've declared up here. Um, and the fill, why don't we make it blue? So that would be something like that. And uh, then we're going to use the text function, text. So um, we'll write hello world. Now we can do this as a string. Uh, you know, if we want spaces, just hit space, put everything inside of, a, um, uh, inside of quotes. And maybe we'll do width divided by two, height divided by two. So let's, let's just see if that's working for us. And you can see it took a while to load up that font. And here you go, there's hello world. And it's, you can see it's left aligned. Uh, yeah, so this is just kind of the beginning of doing that. And maybe just to have some fun with it, maybe we'll do something like mouse x and mouse y um, and play around with it. So once it loads, then it should, should follow around. Yeah, there we go. So we're kind of drawing with the text. All right. In this example, I want to show how to align text in, in different ways. Um, and I also want to bring in um, a typeface um, that's not a system font so that I can um, you know, have more creative flexibility with it. So I started working on a sketch. And uh, the main things I want to show you is uh, you know, I went through the steps. I have a pfont object, f. I have a string here, um, and, the, and I called it s. And I'm going to use this just to show that I can. It might, you know, you might uh, find it easier to have a, a string that contains all the text and call that rather than typing it in. Uh, and you know, we can. Uh, one thing about strings is you can think about them as kind of like an array of characters. Or you know, we could also make uh, an, ar uh, an array of strings and cycle through them. That's something we might do a little bit later on. But here's the some text that I wanted to play with. Um, I have already loaded in the data folder uh, this typeface, and it's a TTF, a format that works well. Um, 
so we'll go through here. We have, we have the size, we have a TTF. Um, if you, you know, some of you might have typefaces in their OTF or some other format. Uh, I found that you can go to a website like transponder org or there's other websites that will let you convert to TTF and so you can get in that format um, let's see so we'll we'll load it here you can specify the size there but I think we'll you we might end up changing it and then I just have a draw so actually nothing is really happening yet uh, you won't see anything I want to make sure uh, okay declare the object of type P font create the font here and then next we want to use text font to specify what we're gonna which what the font is and it's going to be F um, and, uh, let's see, we want to, uh, or we wanted to align the text. Uh, I, I guess I should also maybe put a fill on it. Maybe for right now it's just black. Uh, so align the text left. What does that look like? We're going to use this function text align and you'll put in, uh, capital letters left. Uh, so what's the text we'll use? That variable and so that's this is kind of nice because I want to use this several times I can just use this variable I don't have to keep typing or copying and pasting that in uh, and let's say this is left aligned and we'll put it uh, to the left side um, and maybe just to uh, make it kind of clear what I'm doing I'm, I want to put like a vertical line down the center of the comp here uh, oops so this is just drawing a vertical line okay. so let's just see if that works correctly so we're yeah there we go we're left aligned this is that line I was telling you about just to kind of give us a visual um, okay so let's let's try to align the text right I think I think you get the idea here uh, you can do right text s divided by two. So what does that look like? Oops, I should probably, oh, I put it on the same line, but maybe I want to move it down a little bit further. Um, and I mean, just, just to go even f further, I, uh, you could center align this as well. Uh, and maybe we'll just, is that 280? So it just goes down. So I have three different types of alignment. Uh, that's great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, actually start to align things bait or uh, move the alignment or yeah move the alignment positioning based off of uh, each character. Like if I wanted to have a staggered almost like staircase type of effect, uh, how how could I go and do that? Um, we're going to need to go through like again think about this string up here as maybe a an array of characters uh, so what we could do is go uh, create a loop and go th go through that um, go through character by character so what we're going to do is we'll start at zero and we'll say while we're uh, while it's less than the length of s which is this string up here uh, and we're just going to advance one so we use the for loop a lot uh, now, because I want to uh, target each character, maybe I'll center each one. Um, and what I'll do is I can use this function uh, care at, and it takes in sort of an index value. So uh, the first letter, whoops, I, I'm not, even though it's an array, I'm not going to use the array sign. I'm, I'm actually going to use parentheses. Um, I'm going to use I here. So the first time it goes through will be at index zero, right? Character at zero. That's the first one. Then one, then two, then three. Uh, okay, so we'll do that. Um, now, we're going to need to do a little bit of math here. Maybe I'll start it at width divided by four. So this is the, the leftmost character. And then um, I want to increment. Maybe I'll do I times 20. Uh, we'll see if that works. Uh, and I said I want to do kind of a staircase effect. So what if it's like... Uh, um, where am I at? I'm at, I'm at like maybe height divided by four times three or uh, what would that be? That's maybe we'll say like three, uh, 320. I'm just adding 40 onto this. So I'm trying to figure that just kind of stagger all these. Uh, plus, um, 
let's let's try this i times 30 30 or 20 i'm kind of taking a guess here uh but this should kind of create a staggered effect uh let's see is that all that i need to do um i think that's good let's try to run that and oh there we go so teamwork and you can see it's going down maybe maybe what i did was too much i i said 30 so maybe it's just 10 uh, if I wanted to kind of still fit on the screen it's you know it's, it's kind of falling off but uh, it's okay um, all right so this is you know a, a way for me to uh, target each letter uh, while we're here why don't we play around with uh, some trigonometry let's bring in some data and let's let's actually bring uh, maybe we can bring like a sine wave into here so maybe in uh, 320 uh, I think I, I'm gonna push it a little bit further down so that remember sine wave goes negative and positive so uh, I want I want to have enough space to kind of move around maybe I'll I'll actually just take height divided by four times three so that's four thirds three fourths of the height so imagine that dividing the height into four and then moving down three units uh, we'll do plus sine theta um, and we want to, maybe we'll add it at i times pi divided by eight. So this will create kind of an offset for each letter. And we need to kind of multiply it by something. I'll try 50, although maybe that's too much. Uh, and then make sure we increment theta. Uh, we'll try 0.01. There we go. So yeah, here is kind of, you can see the sine wave being used to, to direct the position. It's going pretty slow. Maybe you want it to go faster. And again, if you want it to go faster, just add, add more. There we go. So we have our animated type. Um, and this is great because, yeah, you can, I'm doing vertical position right now, but you could certainly do uh, horizontal position and you could do scaling, you could do rotation. You know, if you're using push and pop matrix and translates, there's some interesting things that can happen here. Now that you know how to use type in processing, I think a good exercise is to try to create some kinetic type. Uh, maybe start with a word uh, or a phrase and, and try to animate it, um, try different things. So earlier I mentioned uh, we could we could do some translations and I think this is a good place to start. I, I wanna show um, kind of the process. Uh, I have a really basic skeleton and I'm gonna start building off of that. So I have uh, a string that I'm going to use, s, uh, and the phrase or the word is just output. Uh, we want to call that um, pfont object. We'll call it f. Um, I'm going to use si a sine wave later on. So that, that's why I have this float data here. Um, I might use noise. Um, so I have that here. Uh, so the size is here. We use create font to load up this uh, typeface, this is a TTF file, and this is inside the data folder of the sketch. Uh, the background is going to be black. We specify which text font we're going to be using. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll make it white. And here I just, I have a for loop that's set up kind of similar to what I did before. I just want to show you, I've, I've used push matrix and pop matrix, um, uh, text align center, and I'm translating it now. Uh, so that shifts everything over. Right now I'm starting kind of to, on the left-hand side, width divided by eight um, plus I times 100. So it's always going to shift over by 100 and it's in the center vertically uh, text. Each character is going to be set and we're just setting at zero, zero because we've already translated. There's a push matrix, uh, a pop matrix, and then data at the bottom. Looks like I'm missing something. Oops. Uh, oops, I guess I made a little bit of an error. So, okay, so here's my, Here's my text, uh, and now I want to go ahead and start moving things around, just play, playing with that. So maybe one thing I want to try is like moving or adjusting uh, kind of the horizontal spacing. Maybe what I could do is translate this. Uh, I could do plus i times uh, now. Maybe we'll map sine of theta here. Uh, so sine uh, normally goes from negative 1 to 1, and maybe we'll say uh, 0 to 100. So this will let us shift that horizontal space over. There you go. So 
that we're moving things up and down. And again, theta, the increment of theta is what's determining how fast this is. Um, do we want to do more things? We could try uh, even putting a rotation on here. Maybe we'll take theta. Well, let's throw theta in there. We'll see that I think it might be a little bit too weird. Um, okay, that's, I mean, that's that's fine. We could try that if we want an offset. Again, we could throw an i. Maybe we'll times pi divided by uh, 16, something so that they're kind of, they're slightly offset. If you want a greater offset, you know, do pi divided by eight, and then you'll see they're even more offset, right? And then again, it's, it's, it works as kind of a regular um, offset and pi divided by two, you'll see they're even more offset. So that, that could be interesting. Um, you might also want to try uh, mapping in here as well. So you could try mapping sine, sine of theta. Maybe we'll do plus i, uh, negative 1 to 1, and maybe it's negative pi, uh, negative pi by, by 4, positive pi by 4. So this will give us a range of rotation. We limited it a little bit. It's kind of you know, moving in and out. Uh, it might be fun to try some scaling as well. So this is another transform that we can use. Um, again, I might, I might try <laughs> mapping. Um, sure, let's try that. Negative one, one. Uh, maybe it goes from 0.5 to 1.75. So this is this is like 50%, and this is 175%. Is basically what that is saying. Uh, should we have? enough parentheses there so yeah now we're we're getting wild and wacky uh, one other thing you could do is like if you want something to happen slower you could take do it divide it here you could say theta divided by two uh, now the scaling should happen a little bit more slowly you know, just kind of wild uh, or maybe divided by four we'll, we'll should see again or a more pronounced effect yeah you can kind of see it's starting big and getting smaller over time. Um, yeah, so there's there's a there's a lot that you could do in here. Um, uh, you know, I'll I'll have some code up on GitHub. You can kind of see roughly how it works. But um, yeah, I think you can, you can try exploring all these different things. Maybe you even try um, changing the color as well. That could be something fun.